All right, what I wanna go through and do today is show you or prove mathematically that the rotational moment of inertia for a rotating assembly, in this case, two point masses on the end of a thin rod, is minimized when we rotate that assembly through its center of gravity. So in order to do this, first we're gonna to need to go through and find where the position of center of gravity is for this particular assembly. Uh, so what I have here is a one kilogram point mass and a two kilogram point mass. I know I've drawn these as though they have size, uh, but we're gonna treat them as though they're point masses for simplicity's sake. So using our equation for center of gravity, we can go through and find the center of gravity for this system. Now we find the center of gravity for this system or this rotating object is 0.6 from the left edge because that's where we chose to call a position of zero. Now, if you want to see more about how to find the center of gravity and see this explained more, just click up here to take a look at a center of gravity video. Now, remember, what we're trying to do in this problem is show that the rotational moment of inertia is minimized when the axis about which everything is rotating passes through the center of gravity. Now, I could go through and just put an axis here and come up with a number and say, hey, it'll be greater if we move that axis. But what I want to actually do is go through and come up with a expression for the inertia as a function of anywhere I choose to put this axis of rotation. So what I'm going to do is put an axis of rotation some distance x away from our position of zero. And this way we can put in any value of x we choose and our equation should spit out the rotational moment of inertia for the system. So to generate an equation for the rotational moment of inertia, let's first take a look at the rotational moment of inertia of a particle. Now you'll remember the rotational moment of inertia of a particle is given by the equation mr squared, where m is the mass of the particle and r is the radius of the particle, or really I should say the distance between the particle and the axis of rotation. Now it's tempting in this problem to say, or to think, that perhaps the rotational moment of inertia will be minimized if we have our axis pass through this till two kilogram ball. Uh, if the axis passes through this two kilogram point mass, that would make the radius zero, thus giving it effectively no inertia. So then we only have the inertia of the small one kilogram particle to deal with. But that actually works out to not be true. Um, and, and I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna show you why, and I'm gonna prove that the rotational moment of inertia is minimized when we have this X, the distance between zero and our axis of rotation equal the position of our center of gravity. Now in coming up with the rotational moment of inertia of an assembly, you'll remember the inertia or the total inertia is equal to the sum of the individual inertias. Now in this problem, we only have to deal with two individual particles. Uh, so that makes this a little bit easier to sort out. So let's go through and work out the rotational moment of inertia around this axis for each individual particle, starting with our one kilogram particle. It has a mass, according to this equation here, it has a mass of one and a radius. Uh, we could just say the radius was X. I'm actually gonna go through and call this zero minus X. Um, and, and why that is, I'll explain in a second. It's, it's inconsequential if you call it X. But I'm gonna call this radius zero minus X and you'll see why when we get to this particle. So that's the radius squared. Looking at our second particle, I two is gonna be, it's got a mass of two. And the radius in this case is the distance between this particle and the axis of rotation. Uh, so that is not going to be one, that's the distance between the particle and a position of zero. And it's not gonna be X, that's the distance between zero and X. So our actual radius here is gonna be the difference between them. That is one minus X. And you'll see this structure here is why I structured this radius this way. 
I called it zero minus X just to be consistent with this. Um, and the reason I did that is because if we chose to put our axis of rotation somewhere over here on the left, uh, we start getting into weird things with negatives. Or if we have our axis of rotation somewhere way over here, uh, far to the right of everything, we get some weird values for radius as well. Um, what I want you to realize though, and what I don't want to get caught up in is worrying about things like absolute values or whether our radius should be positive or negative or anything like that, because it doesn't matter. The squared term on our radius means we don't care if, if our function for distance or really radius kicks out a negative value or not. Now in putting these together, we're going to get a total inertia. of this. This is our function for the total inertia of this system as a function of x. Now this doesn't mean a whole lot, there's not a whole lot of conclusions to be drawn from this, uh, but this is just giving us a function where we could plug in any value for x and find the rotational moment of inertia around our axis of rotation. Now you remember, what we're trying to do is go through and prove that this term, the rotational moment of inertia, is minimized when the axis of rotation passes through the center of gravity. So what I'm going to go through and do with this is look at where our rotational moment of inertia is minimized. And you remember, using calculus, we can go through and find where or at what position of x our rotational moment of inertia is minimized, and that is simply by taking the derivative of i with respect to x. Now, in order to do that, I'm actually going to expand this out first. This term here, I'm going to foil this out. Now, I know there's lots of ways to take the derivative of this function. I'm just breaking this down so we can keep the calculus as simple as humanly possible and just use the power rule. So taking the derivative of this function with respect to x. And cleaning this up a little bit. You'll find that the derivative of i with respect to x works out to be negative 4 plus 6x. Now again, this doesn't mean anything magical to us, but we've taken the derivative. And remember, when we want to minimize a function or find the maximum of a function, either one, uh, we take the derivative and set it equal to zero. And so here I have a derivative and I'm gonna set this equal to zero. Now this function will tell me the position at which the rotational moment of inertia is minimized. Now we don't need to do any sort of concavity test here to find out whether this is a maximum or a minimum. Uh, it's, it's, it's a minimum. As we get farther and farther and farther away, or as x becomes greater and greater, we know our rotational moment of inertia is going to grow without bound. Uh, so I know we're talking about a minimum here, so I don't need to get into concavity. I know some of you calculus nerds want to, but we don't need to play that game today. So in solving for x, we find x is two-thirds. And again, what is this telling us? This is telling us the position at which the rotational moment of inertia is minimized. We took a function, took its derivative, and set it equal to zero. So now we found the position of minimum rotational inertia. And this is a relatively large consequence here. What this means is because the position of ro minimum rotational moment of inertia is equal to the position of center of gravity, really what we found is that we can minimize how hard it is to rotate an object or an assembly by trying to rotate it around its center of gravity. So what we've done here is first found the center of gravity and then found a function for the rotational moment of inertia. We've taken the derivative and set it equal to zero in order to find where that moment of inertia is minimized. And from this, we've been able to see that the rotational moment of inertia is minimized at the position of center of gravity. And on that note, that's all for now.